So after taking the gold I found in dirt to this jeweler, he melted it down and it was wow. worth about seventy three dollars and sixty eight cents. And you guys told me to keep it and to find even more gold and dirt to add to it. So in my last video, I found 0 .06 grams in a small bag, and then in a bigger bag, I found even bigger chunks that amounted to a whole gram of gold worth about fifty six dollars. And this time, I'm going to be attempting to melt it all down myself with this torch. I remember the jeweler just poured it all in a crucible like this and poured this stuff on it, and that's what I did. And then I lit up the torch and started putting the heat on it. And I put the heat on it for quite a while and threw some more stuff on there. And eventually the gold got red hot like this, but it wasn't really melting. And then I tried to move it and found out I got it all stuck inside the crucible. So then I had the idea to buy more gold from the pawn shop to take to the jeweler. Hey, I was just uh, wondering if you still had those gold nuggets. Oh, in the little jar? I, these? I was just wanting to buy something to add to my uh, my little nugget, remember? I wanted to buy some more gold to add to it. I'd say that, I guess. He weighed it for me at- 0.9 grams. I'd do 80 on it. You got a hundred dollar bill? Is yep. that real? <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty- There you go, sir. Comment if you want me to take it back yeah. to the jeweler to get it melted down. So after filling my giant human hamster ball up with 200 bath bombs in my last video, I had another idea with it. Filling it up with helium. So I attached the helium tank to this plastic tube and then deflated the hamster ball about halfway and then began pushing down on this nozzle and filling the hamster ball the rest of the way up with helium. I then attached this rope and took it outside to see how high we could get it and kicking it didn't make it go so far so I started spinning it around like this and tried to throw it and then try that again one more time. Uh. And then I just jumped on it like this and fell and then tried to throw it up on this roof But it didn't go and I couldn't really get it that high So I just hit it with my car like this and hit it again comment anything else I should try so one day I ordered this money candle bear because a while back I ordered this candle that had diamonds in it And then I've ended up buying a bunch of these cash candles and only found this two dollar bill and another two dollar bill on this candle. giving me two two dollar bills but today i have this bear that supposedly could contain upwards of a hundred dollars worth of value so i put the bear in this glass container and then started melting it with my torch until eventually we saw the foil packet and i just pulled it out with my pliers to open it up i spent 40 bucks Let's see how much money i made and inside we found yet again another two dollar bill and then this coin that was a kennedy half dollar so i had to see what it was worth i bought this uh money bear candle thing it's supposed to have like very valuable stuff in it i paid about 40 bucks for it i found this two dollar bill okay. and this coin i think i read that it could be worth up to 1500 dollars depending on the kind of coin it is yeah it's a kennedy half dollar it's a 74 it's not even silver so he examined it and said i mean it's 50 cents and then he even showed me another one that was only online for a dollar so this is only worth two dollars though for two dollars yep. you got two dollars fifty cents so you only lost thirty seven fifty so I've been trying and trying to make a genuine perfect Prince Rupert drop. And in my last video, I attempted using a way bigger jar to see if that would work, but it wasn't enough and the drop still didn't shatter when I snapped the tail. So this time I found this all new type of glass on Amazon that's for glass blowers. So I'm hoping it will melt better and allow me to create the perfect Prince Rupert drop. I also was sure to focus the heat on the bottom of the drop. Like you guys said, it fell into the water like this and it looked pretty perfect. You could see some bubbles inside of it. I grabbed it by the tail and then clipped it and it didn't shatter. So I clipped the tail one more time and it still just looked like this. So yeah, that's a lot of failed Rupert drops, but I had one more idea. A tall jar combined with this glass might be the right combination of things I needed to create a genuine Rupert drop. The drop got red hot and then melted into the jar like this and just kind of floated in the center. I then dumped it out and the drop looked perfect. I was pretty sure this one was gonna be the first genuine one I had made. And like you guys told me, I clamped it on the very end of the tail like this and snapped it, but the whole drop did not shatter. So let me know if I should try something else. <laughs> In my last video, I attempted to create a Prince Rupert glass drop, which is basically a piece of glass that is indestructible unless the tail is broken. And I thought I succeeded because it looked like wow. a Prince Rupert drop and we couldn't seem to break it no matter what we tried, but I accidentally broke the tail off and you guys told me that meant it wasn't a genuine Prince Rupert drop. So today I'm trying to create a genuine one and I also started off trying to make a colored one, but it instantly broke when it hit the water. Cause apparently the colored ones are way harder to make, but I tried one more time and this time I was only able to melt it and bend it like this and it wouldn't even fall. So yeah, I couldn't really make a colored one, so I just resorted to trying to make the genuine clear one that would break when I smashed the tail. In first try, we got what looked like a genuine Prince Rupert drop just hanging from this long glass strand. I put it first through a few durability tests and it held up just like the other Prince Rupert drop and wouldn't break. Here I am trying to squeeze it as hard as I could with pliers to break it, but nothing happened. So it was time to go for the tail. <sighs> then I just grabbed it directly by the tail with these pliers until it completely snapped but the drop didn't break. So comment if you know what I did wrong. Today I witnessed the most insane illusions in the world at the Museum of Illusions. See if you can guess how they work. Right now, I appear way smaller than my brother. Let's switch. 
You look tiny. And then in this next illusion, it looks like I'm hanging from this building. And then we went on this bridge that made it seem like we were literally spinning over and over. And then there was this giant crazy cube thing that when you looked into it, it looked like it went on forever. And this object that literally turned shape and color. And this last illusion was my favorite. Enjoying my lunch. They had this zero gravity restaurant that I could literally float in like this. It was nuts. And overall, the Museum of Illusions in St. Louis was a blast. Get your tickets in my box. So in my last few videos, I've been trying to make wow. a genuine Prince Rupert drop that's indestructible but snaps when you break the tail. But every time I broke the tail, all of my drops did not break. So today I'm attempting all your suggestions to make a genuine Prince Rupert drop. The first of which was melting a drop into ice cold water. So I melted it until it fell in the icy cold water and just like that we had our next drop. I pulled it out of the water and it looked super pristine and genuine and survived the hammer test. But when I chopped off the tail, it did not break. So the next one I was going to use ice cold Gatorade and you guys also said to focus on melting the bottom of the drop only and twisting the heat so it burns evenly so that's what I did. It looked so cool next to the blue Gatorade and I was sure to burn every single angle this side this side and here it is from above it looked so pretty and eventually it melted completely into the Gatorade like this. And after pulling it out of the Gatorade and looking at it, it looked slightly different like it might be genuine. So I applied the pressure on the tail and snapped it. But the glass drop did not break. Bruh. So I've been making these Prince Rupert glass drops that are indestructible unless the tail is snapped. But I failed because all of mine don't break when I snap the tail and I've tried everything from ice to blue liquid and every time my drop just looks Bruh. like this. But you guys commented and said to try with a bigger jar so I got this one that's a little bit bigger and we're gonna try it again. I focused the heat on the bottom of the drop and pretty quickly it was starting to melt until eventually it was dripping into the jar. It landed right here so I stuck my hand down in it and pulled it out and it was so beautiful. The drop looked very genuine and felt like a real one so I put it on the tail and did this but it ended up the same. So I've been trying to make a genuine Prince Rupert drop that shatters when the tail is snapped. And after doing some research, I think I know how you're supposed to actually do it now. The first thing is the water has to be really cold to create a temperature change in the drop. And apparently it's also better to do it handheld and rotate it like this. But my first attempt just created this ugly pretzel thing. But I just got a new piece of glass and really focused the heat on the bottom of the drop. And eventually it finally dropped into the water and it looked perfect. I pulled it out and it was beautiful. And now it was just time to test if it was genuine or not. I'm gonna snip off the tail and if this is genuine it should shatter and here's what happened since I've been failing non-stop to make a genuine Prince Rupert drop that actually shatters when you break the tail, I decided to order one instead because in my last video we made this one and it still didn't work. So I had these shipped from Iceland and one of them broke but they look like this. They look a lot different with this little ball at the end of the tail and they passed the breaking challenge where we can't break the center of them like this. And now it was time to snip the tail to see if they were genuine. I snipped the tail and it just fell off like mine normally do but then I snapped this part and it completely shattered. So I got another drop out and did it again and I grabbed it in the same spot at the base of the tail like this and bam it completely shattered so it turns out I was never doing it wrong I just couldn't make a genuine Prince Rupert drop <laughs> So in my last video, I finally made a genuine Prince Rupert drop that shatters when you break the tail. Well, I actually ordered them online from Iceland because they actually work, unlike the ones I've been making. But today, I'm going to be taking one of these genuine ones and putting it under this hydraulic press to test how strong they are. Now, I first lightly tapped it with this hammer to see if it would do anything, which it didn't, because these drops are known for being indestructible unless the tail is snapped. But then I put the press on it like this, and it didn't do anything either. So I started putting some more pressure on it, and the one-ton hydraulic press basically did nothing to this drop. I was really impressed. Then I decided to make sure it was genuine and shatter it so I grabbed it but it didn't shatter right away so I had to grab lower on the drop and it completely shattered. Here's the slow-mo. So one day I had the idea to fill my parents storm cellar completely up with popcorn. So I ordered 50 pounds of popcorn kernels in these three air popper popcorn machines and got started trying to find the best way to completely fill up the storm cellar. I moved the machines from the top to the bottom like this and I left them on for quite a while just spraying popcorn all over the inside of the storm cellar until the floor was almost getting full. But it wasn't going fast enough, so we had to come up with another idea. I got this popcorn machine out to try to make everything go faster, but it just started pouring rain. So we were forced to make all the popcorn inside. We got these machines going like this, and we just let them go for a long time and started filling up all these trash bags with popcorn. And after a lot longer of popping and popping, we had one full trash bag one of popcorn. Trash bag full. So I took it out to the storm cellar to see how much of a difference it made. And all it did was completely cover the floor, so we had a lot more work to do. We left the things popping for like an hour until we completely filled another trash bag full of popcorn. 
and I tossed it on in, and this is what it looked like. And I estimated we'd need about eight times the popcorn. Wow, we spent so hours cute. upon hours devising the perfect popcorn popping strategy, running three poppers nonstop, filling up bag after bag until we literally had 16 bags of popcorn, and all the popcorn was popped. Here goes the first bag. Now all that was left to do was to fill it up bag by bag and have some fun. Five. I dumped every single trash bag full of popcorn into the storm cellar one by one like this until we were completely out. And then I jumped in. Whoa! My this parents' storm so cellar cool. was completely filled and I was completely surrounded by popcorn. I'm surrounded by popcorn. I did the most logical thing and buried myself in it and then I got up and my girlfriend got inside the popcorn. And then I let my brother give it a shot as well. Whoa, this is so weird, dude. I'm in a storm cellar full of popcorn right now. I'm gonna completely cover myself up. I feel like a popcorn king. Should I eat one? Pretty comfy. Looks like it's snowing popcorn. So let me know what else I should do with the popcorn. So one day I bought a bunch of giant pumpkins weighing several hundred pounds and I wanted to run several durability tests on some of them including running one over. So starting with the smallest pumpkin, this hundred pound pumpkin, we took it to the hot tub to see if it would float. Oh, it does! And we discovered giant pumpkins do indeed wow. float. It works! So I then <laughs> had another now test. Now time for a bunch of different weights. Starting with the two pound weight. It put a dent in it. Three pound weight. Oh yeah, another dent. Go! After surviving the dumbbells, I then rolled it down my storm cellar. Yo! And it was perfectly fine, so I then put it in this hammock and started swinging Best it around. Friends. And I then got mad at it and decided to light it on fire. I stuck some leaves down in it, lit it on fire, and it didn't really burn. Pumpkin pie. After that failed, I got out the even bigger 300 pound pumpkin. And I began oh. trying to carve a little face with my axe. I did three swings to make an eye. <laughs> pumpkin carving with Dylan. And then I made another eye. And then I carved the mouth, and it actually looked pretty good. It looked like a real giant jack-o'-lantern. Here's my jack-o'-lantern. Let's run it over. Now it was just time for the final test. Could I run it over? So we tried to run it over, but I just pushed it, and then we knocked it again like this. So I had to just keep hitting it with my axe until it was destroyed. Right. Yeah. Mm, and then we got out the little 100-pound pumpkin and ran it completely over like this. So yeah, comment what I should do with the 500-pound pumpkin. Two years ago, I did the world's largest elephant toothpaste experiment ever done inside a giant pumpkin. This year, I bought a bunch of giant pumpkins. This one, we ran completely over like this. But we saved this one, the biggest one, weighing 400 pounds, for another giant jack-o'-lantern elephant toothpaste Cutting experiment. Through. I started out with a regular pumpkin carving kit, but it wasn't doing enough. So I got out this hammer thing and started prying into the pumpkin. And we finally had to use a machete to get all the way through wow. because it was so thick. And here was the guts. I did my best scooping them out by hand like this. And some of it was impossible to get out. This is like hard. Look at this. It's like a mound of guts. And then I wanted to see how far I could stick my head in. Uh, I'm in a giant pumpkin. I'm in a giant pumpkin. And then yeah, it was empty. Pretty clear. And the pumpkin was ready for carving. In the face. And just like that, the jack-o'-lantern was complete and it was ready for the elephant toothpaste. I took the top off the pumpkin, poured the solution, and put it in the pumpkin inside the pumpkin. Alright, this should work. Three, two, one. It's going. And it started out slower than last time, going first out the mouth and then expanding a lot. Fuck it. And it kept expanding and completely covering the giant pumpkin and elephant toothpaste. Elephant toothpaste. So one day, after spending $25 on this bag of dirt and finding two small pieces of gold worth, $5.72, I decided to step it up and spend $70 on a bigger bag of dirt with the goal of making even more money. The first step was trying to sift all the big chunks out to try to find any big pieces of gold. I dumped it all out on this table and started looking. And I saw a bunch of crystals and rocks, and then right away we saw it. The gold. We already found our first piece of gold, and it was big. This was it on my finger. I added it to the jar, and we oh, kept on looking. One. And right after that, we found this second smaller piece of gold. This bag was already proving to be more popular. 
profitable. Gold. And then we found a third piece and quickly found a fourth piece and our jar was starting to look pretty good, full of gold. I was getting excited thinking this pile would really make me rich. And we stumbled gold. upon a fifth piece of gold. And after that, I just got my phone light out and really started digging through the rocks and found yet again another piece. We found a seventh piece of gold in the Let's thicker go. pieces of dirt. And then it was time to do one more thorough search before we moved on to panning all the finer pieces of dirt. Which at first didn't seem like it was going well. Right, no gold. <gasps> Wait. Until literally the tiniest piece of gold I've ever seen caught my eye. And with eight pieces of gold, it was time to see what it was worth. What's up, Dylan? You remember I came in the other day, I spent $25 on the dirt and I found that $5 worth of gold. Yep. I ended up spending 70 more dollars on a different set of dirt and I found even more gold this time. How much gold do you think's in there? Uh, I have a feeling it's about $35 worth of gold or so. You think so? I'm guessing there's probably $20 worth in there. He zeroed out the cap on the scale and then weighed it with the gold and it weighed. 0.4 grams. And then he calculated the value at 21 carats. $23.35. So basically they put $23 worth of gold in a $70 bag of dirt. That's a pretty good return on their part. Well, I might not have found it all either. And I made $20. So I bought this bag of dirt for $70 and we found enough gold to be worth approximately $23.35. And since then, you guys told me if I spend even more money on a better bag of dirt, I'd find even more gold. So I bought this bag off Amazon for $130 and I started out sifting all the big chunks to try to find a big nugget. And right away we found one. It was one of the biggest ones we'd ever seen. It could be worth a ton on its own. And right after that, Ooh. we saw another big chunk right here. I picked them up and put them both in the jar and then kept on searching. And we quickly found more gold. gold. We found this bigger triangle triangle piece and this even smaller piece you could barely see and we just kept adding more and more gold to the jar and after that we literally Ooh, just gold. found piece after piece of gold non-stop and after a little bit more searching through gold, this gold. pile we found one more piece of gold and then i got out the rest of the sand and dumped it in the sifter sifted right. it out and immediately found more gold we found a few more pieces in the rest of this sand here and here and then to make sure i didn't miss anything i got out this metal detector which detected one last really small piece and then i resorted to panning for all the finer pieces left which really get me anything until eventually sip, i was sip. almost out and i saw it. it left tons of little pieces of gold that i put inside this container and then tested with my detector to make sure it was real and then it was time to see what it was worth here's the gold i found i want you to tell me what you think it's worth it's more than you've had in the past and he then waited in the cap to see what it was worth your 0.9 grams 37 dollars worth of gold oh that's actually a lot and before giving me any money for it he made sure it was completely real and he actually said he made a mistake and it was worth more for 57 dollars sorry I, did, I had the wrong carrot weight no way I'll give you 50 bucks for it you're only losing half this way the most I ever made. Well, you really didn't make anything. You still lost 80. So we tried blowing up a giant inflatable air mattress and figured out we could blow it up by constantly airing it up and letting it pop layer by layer like this until it was super big and popped. Which gave me the idea, can you do the same thing to a giant inflatable couch? So I ordered this $70 inflatable couch off Amazon, blew it up like this, and it was ready to test. This couch is comfy. Cup holder. We moved it out to the middle of the road. Time for the couch to blow. And then began inflating the couch. And in the first couple minutes, we could see the couch already start expanding. And it looked like as big as it would get. We've hit the 11 minute mark. This thing is huge. And we noticed every part of the couch looked about five times bigger than the normal size of it. So we kept going and we could see the back of the couch expanding over the top. And it expanded so much, it left a tiny hole that we had to repair with the patch kit. The couch kept inflating without any signs of popping. And it's already lasted longer than the air mattress. This is one durable couch. And we continued to inflate it for over 40 minutes and we found another hole. The pressure kept tearing holes before it blew up the couch. So we resorted to plan B, Fire. shooting it with a thumbtack but it didn't do anything. So I just chucked a giant rock at it and failed. So one day I bought this 30 foot weather balloon to see how big it could really get before it popped, as well as this giant wobble bubble to see how big it would inflate as well. So we started with the wobble bubble, just inflating it to normal height. And this is how it was at the normal size. So then it was time to make it even bigger. And not knowing when it would pop, we wanted to mess around with it at the giant size as well. So we stopped it and started playing with it. It was massive and crazy. I hit the ceiling and then walked under it. And then we started inflating it even more. And we could see the wobble bubble material stretching and it kept getting bigger and bigger. And we had no idea when it was gonna pop. But eventually after a very long time, it looked like this right before it popped here's the slow-mo yeah it was a really hard pop. and now it was time to inflate the 30 foot weather balloon i attached it to the giant air pump and quickly it started getting really big this thing's gonna air up until it explodes and it didn't take very long for it to become way taller than me and i could already see the material of the balloon stretching as it got bigger and bigger and I had no idea when the balloon would pop, and it just kept getting bigger and bigger. And I just sat there in amazement at the biggest balloon I've ever seen in my life. This is how tall it is. It's literally about to reach the ceiling. And to give an idea of how tall it was, I reached this thing up to show it barely reached. Then I had the idea to throw it at it, but it did nothing. And I was shocked at how what strong the, the balloon was, so I just kept throwing it. But it literally did nothing but break the stick, so I threw it one more time. And it popped. <laughs> 
In one of my last videos, I bought this candle that supposedly had a real diamond in it, and we actually found one. But the pawn shop guy told me it was only worth Just about a dollar. But recently, I saw these money candles that contain loads of money. I paid 30 bucks for it, and right off the bat, got gummy bears. Somewhere in this candle, there's money. I lit the candle to get it going and let it burn. And while I waited, I thought about all the money I could find, 100, 200. And then I just got bored and let it sit by this window while I did some other activities, like riding this scooter around the warehouse, then just contemplating life up here. But eventually I got too impatient and really wanted to see how much money was inside. So I just blew it out so I could start digging and in it. And since it had been burning, the wax was actually a lot softer and easier to dig through. And we actually saw the money. But I had to keep on digging because it was too waxy and slippery to actually grab it. But eventually we were finally able to break it loose oh. and pull it out. Oh, we got it, bro. The money was encased in this foil that I almost cut, but then I was like, oh, wait, I can just unwrap it like this. And I was about to find out how much profit I made. Oh, yo, is that a $2 bill? A genuine $2 bill. Wow. It's like George Washington or something. Wow. So after trying to sell my signed Gail Lewis Walmart vest to the pawn shop guy, he wouldn't give me what I wanted. Lewis signature. I think 10,000's fair. I'd give you 100 bucks for it. But he gave me another idea. Put it on eBay. Maybe I'll bid on it. And you guys told me I should put it on eBay, considering this one went all the way up to 400k on eBay before getting banned. And a while back, I had a similar situation happen with these paintings that went all the way up to 20,000 but never sold. And I'm assuming that might happen here, but we're going to do it anyway and see what happens. I ordered this jersey frame. And I put the shirt in along with this Walmart Christmas pin Gail Lewis sent me as well. I then put it on this hanger, clipped it into the frame and it looked so good i closed it up and it was beautiful it was now my most valuable possession and it was also ready for ebay gail lewis signed rookie jersey i propped it up on this couch to take some pictures from my listing and then i started typing away i put it as a sports jersey and put all the pictures up and stuff and the listing looked great i was sure to highlight the christmas pin and the signature i started the bid at a hundred dollars and then wrote my description this jersey is a must-have for any walmart fan it features the name of legendary player gail lewis and is signed for authenticity the jersey is an original piece blah 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 so Stay tuned to see if we get banned on eBay. So one day, I had the idea to fill my human-sized hamster ball completely up with fog. To find out if the fog would stay trapped in the hamster ball overnight. We aired up the hamster ball with the fog machine inside and then sealed it up and it was ready to go. Now I just pressed this red button and the fog started dispensing all over the hamster ball. I wanted to make it completely white so you couldn't see through it at all. And I let the fog go for several more minutes until the hamster ball was completely filled. Then I just ripped these cords out to completely seal and it. And I'm going to be coming back tomorrow to see if the fog's still there. Stay tuned. So a while back, I made a video where I went out to the oil field and bought a jar of oil Here's from this oil man just to find out it wasn't worth near what I paid for I think it. you paid way too much for it. I'd give you probably 50 cents for so it. So I went back out there to get my money back and he ended up hiring me to do a bunch of work for him. Until eventually, after a long day's work, I had earned all my money back. Here's all your money back. And today I'm going back out there because he has a new deal for me. Just the deal for you. Where I get to find my own oil. Here you go. Go right out there and dig for oil right over there. He sent me out to dig for a spot to drill oil. So I just walked around with my shovel digging and trying to look for oil. Hey, I don't see any oil over here. Just dig deeper. I kept looking around and was beginning to think I wouldn't find oil until I actually hit some. Hey, I think I hit oil. It was just coming out of the ground. Oh, wow. I'll tell you what, that is oil. You drilled the shallowest oil well on planet Earth. I took a good look at it and I could even see my reflection. And then we set up this rig to test it that when I turn this valve, it should shoot up oil all over. If I turn this valve, we should get high quality oil. But when I turned it, there was no oil. It's water. And I was pretty upset about it. Life is nothing but a risk, son. Welcome to the oil business. So one day I wanted to see what would happen if you put 200 bath bombs inside a giant human hamster ball. Here's one of the bath bombs inside a jar of water so I can only imagine how crazy it's going to be inside the hamster ball. The first step was just filling the ball completely up with water. I let the water fill for quite a while and then we put the first bath bomb in. And once it hit the water it immediately started fizzing and turning the water pinkish. And before we put all the bath bombs in I decided to put a couple in my pocket and then get inside the ball and release them. And they looked so cool dissolving in the water I had my brother drop a bunch more in to see what it would look like with a ton in there and the water was basically super reddish orange at this point so then i got out and re-aired up the ball because it was time to put all 200 in and we had a genius method to get them in without losing any air by putting them in this tube that would shoot out into the water we did this until all 200 bath bombs were inside the hamster ball swirling around and it looked so insane inside it looked like one giant bath bomb and then we aired it back up with the leaf blower so i could try to get inside it but as soon as i stepped in the scent was immediately too strong oh. so i got out and we just drained it 
So the other day I bought a bunch of scrap silver from the pawn guy. Stuff like this? Yeah, that'll work. So I bought 60 grand. 62 bucks right there. And then I took it back to my warehouse where I was able to successfully melt some of it down into this small little coin. But now I'm putting it all back in the crucible to melt into one bar to sell back to the pawn shop guy. So first I had to cut it into neat little pieces so it would all fit inside the crucible together. And then once we had it completely full, we started putting the heat on it and it began to get red hot. But it wasn't really melting like it did when we had a lot smaller pieces of silver in it. So I then just stopped the flame and realized I was just getting it all stuck inside the crucible like this. So I tried one more thing to try to get it hotter which was putting this torch on the bottom of it while I hit it with the other torch like this and it was working. It was getting red hot like this so I tried to pour some of it but it wasn't all coming out. So then I just put it in water but it started boiling the water. So I put it in water one more time and then had the idea to just throw it on the ground. And bam just like that we actually had one piece of silver that we took to the pawn shop. Hey you know that silver I bought from you the other day? Yep. I melted it all down and I think it's worth more money now. What about all the resin and stuff on it? Oh, that was just leftover stuff after I melted it. I see. What do you want to do with it? Then I told him I just wanted to sell it back to him and he proceeded to weigh it. You got 59.1 grams. Did you lose any of it? Because right now you're only at 46 bucks. You're only at $46 right now. Uh, yeah, some of it might have dripped off. Oh. So how much would you pay for that? I'd give you 40 bucks for it. I'm losing like 12 bucks. You make your deal when you buy it, not when you sell it. You know what, I'll do it. You want to sell it? Yeah. All righty. There you go, sir. So I've been having this jeweler melt down all the gold I've been finding in dirt. And currently my piece of gold looks like this, weighs about 3.1 grams and is worth approximately about $185. And you guys said that's not big enough so I should keep buying more bags of dirt to add on to my gold. So that's exactly what I did. We have another over $100 bag of dirt and I started out sifting it out and creating a really large pile of the smooth dirt and all the chunky dirt. And right away I saw four big chunks of gold just sitting in the dirt. So I began plucking them all out of the dirt one by one into this little pile I was creating and then I found two more little chunks to add to my pile until it just looked like this and I added it all into my little container and started searching for some more and found my biggest chunk yet and then after that we searched a whole bunch more but only really found a few more pieces and then I filled up the container and weighed it at 0.74 grams then my brother did one more quick search through and found two more nuggets weighing 0.04 grams and then we went through the finer pieces and couldn't find anything so I started sifting through it like this and found just a few really tiny pieces to add and now we have about $44 more gold. So I've been making a series where we melt down all the gold we've been finding in dirt and right now our gold is worth about $185. And in my last video we sifted through this $120 bag of dirt and ended up finding lots of gold in it weighing 0.74 grams and worth about $44. And now I'm going to be attempting to add all the nuggets to my giant nugget inside this little crucible. I started by setting it on the bricks, getting the flame going and putting the heat on and it started melting really fast and eventually just looked like this shiny ball and it just got brighter and brighter and then I attempted to move it around with this little stick but it just got stuck to it. And then I thought the gold was ready and tried to pick it up but it wasn't and I just kind of broke it apart like this so we had to reheat it and get it all hot again and then we started pouring it but only a little piece went into the crucible and then another piece fell off into the table but we had most of it in this chunk right here but it looked great and weighed in at 3.61 grams and now it was time to see what the pawn shop guy would pay for it we bought some more dirt for it sipped it through it found some more gold and we added it to the gold you're still buying bags of dirt you get about a 50 percent return so you spend 100 and you get 50 back is that good odds? What happened to it? It's all misshapen. He then waited and got the same weight I did. 3.6 grams. 224.43. If it's only 18 karat, it's 201.98. I'd probably give you 180 for it. Uh, I'm going to keep it for now. So after having this jeweler melt down this gold I found in dirt, I attempted to melt some more down myself, but just ended up getting it stuck in this crucible. So I then went to the pawn shop guy hey. to buy some more gold nuggets from him to have the jeweler melt down. I on it. You got a $100 bill? Then I took all my gold to the jeweler and he told me he could melt all the stuck gold and all the rest of my gold into one little piece. He poured it all into my crucible like this and got everything ready and then put the torch on it. And eventually it started to melt pretty fast, unlike when I tried. The gold started to look like a pearl that you could move like this and then he let me try to see if I could do it and I just held the flame on there. Then he finished up and poured it into this little mold. And just like that, all my gold became one little nugget weighing about three grams and it was time to see what it was worth. Hey, remember that little bit of nuggets you sold me? I took it to a jeweler and I had him melt it and combine it with all the other gold I have. And so now I have this little nugget. Here, you see? Well, that's pretty neat. It's pretty big, huh? What's it weigh? Three grams. Do you have any idea what carrot it is? Probably like 18 carats. He then got out his acid and tested the gold at Probably 20 carat. What's that's worth? Which was worth about... About $105. And that little bitty piece of gold. So what would you get for that? I'd probably give you 180 for it. Dang. Pretty good. And I told him I'd have to think about it. So comment if I should sell it or keep adding more.
So one day, after finding out from the pawn shop guy that the gold in these sand bricks isn't worth even finding. What do you think they're worth? $2.44. You guys wanted me to go to the store and buy as many of the diamond sand bricks as I could until I found a diamond and see how much the diamonds were. I bought 10 of the small diamonds and one giant diamond for $10. I began with the first diamond, trying to find the best way to get into it, and I eventually put it in water, trying to speed the process along, but it didn't really help. So I got out the world's biggest pocket knife and just started whacking it and then sawing into it. And eventually I found this plastic crystal, but not a diamond, so I kept on going. I slammed the second one open like this and found this rock then the next one had this crystal the next one had another crystal and a rock and i just kept whacking open diamond by diamond finding nothing but little crystals and rocks and we were nearing the end and i was starting to get worried i wasted all my money with the giant diamond being my last hope of finding a diamond so i just started whacking it breaking it apart and once it was fully done we saw it <gasps> no Way. We actually found the diamond on the last one, and this is what it looked like. And now it was just time to find out how rich this would make So, me. remember the other day when I brought in the gold from the gold bricks? Yep. And you told me it was only worth like $2? If that. They have the same thing for diamonds, and I bought enough to where I actually found a diamond. And I want you to tell me, one, if it's even real, and how much it's worth. There's the diamond. This is supposed to be a diamond? So, it is a diamond, but it's the worst diamond there is. Diamonds are graded by how white they are. See how that's black on that piece of paper? So, so this is the worst possible diamond. Like a black diamond's worth less? A black diamond's really worth nothing. So what's it actually worth then? You can probably order that from a supplier for 40 cents. I paid $10 to find this. So after trying to sell a fake Gail Lewis Walmart vest to the pawn shop guy, he could tell she didn't really sign it. I don't think she actually signed it. I think it's someone else maybe just going as her. But she actually saw the video and thought it was hilarious. So I asked her if she would sign a real vest that I could take to the pawn shop, and she agreed. So my friend Brennan gave me his old Walmart vest, and I sent it off to Gail Lewis, and this is the video I got back. Hey, it's me, Gail Lewis, Morris, Illinois, 844. I'm going to be signing a Walmart vest. Bring it in. She actually signed her real signature and sent it back to me. The real Gail Lewis signature. Time to sell it. And I boxed it up and took it back into the pawn shop to show him the real deal. Hey, you remember my Gail Lewis vest, right? Oh yeah, the one that had the, the signature on it. That signature before, it wasn't like exactly real. But this is the real deal. Gail Lewis reached out, because she saw the video. She actually signed me a vest, so. Oh, that's cool. You sure it was her, not just some yeah. catfisher on? I have proof. What in the world? Oh, that's my friend's old name tag. Ignore that. There's a signature. Oh yeah. This right here is the real Gail Lewis signature. And he got on his phone to verify. It's a little better than the first time around. What proof do you have besides this? You said you had some proof? Yeah, yeah, here. Hey, it's me, Gail Lewis. Gonna be signing a Walmart vest. Bring it in. And after showing him the video, he was convinced. Oh, it is the same one. Now that you know this is the real deal, let's talk money. These things went for like upwards of $400,000 on eBay until it got banned. So it didn't really sell for $400,000? No. What do you want for it? I think 10000 is fair. Do you think she would sign one for me if I just sent her a vest? I mean, maybe. She's pretty nice. I'd give you 100 bucks for it. And that was way too low. Do you have an eBay account? Put it on eBay. Maybe I'll bid on it. Yeah, I'll just, I'll just put it on eBay. You're going to regret it when I sell it for way more on eBay. You could have done the same thing. No problem. Have a good day. So like and comment if you want to see me put it on eBay. So the other day I walked into Yo, the pawn shop a knife? and I made a deal to buy this really giant what pocket knife. And then I ran some tests on it comparing it to a regular ah, pocket knife and it did thought. really well. And we even lit it on fire and watched it sizzle through a bunch yeah. of stuff. And now I'm going back in to find something hey, else up, to buy. Hey, I'm just looking to buy something. So I just looked around until something yeah. eventually caught my eye. Yo, is that a sword? Oh yeah, that's a big sword. Can I see it? He then got it down for me Dude, to look at and I was wow. amazed. Where'd you get this? Some old samurai ninja. He was 116 years old, been in his family for 200 years. Really? No, just a cheap sword. So we made a deal and I paid him the money and then I took it back home to test out the sword. I wanted to see what all you could do with a $45 sword from a pawn shop. Starting with me hitting this tree, which did nothing, then lighting the sword on fire and chopping this oh, apple God. in half. Then I shook up this soda to try to chop it and make it explode with the sword, but it wouldn't even bust through so I had to stab Dab it like this. Then I whammed this banana in half and got out my flex sealed crock boot and tried to stab it as well. And the sword was already starting to bend, so I just stabbed this cow, she hit it up against a tree, and bent it like this. So I bought this real iceberg water off Amazon for $200 because I wanted to see if I could pawn it for the same price I paid. But first, I had to buy some normal water to see if there was actually even a noticeable difference. I like it. Smart water. Tastes like water. Let's see if I wasted my money. I smelled the water and it was really funky. Yo, I smell like 15,000 years ago, I swear. I then poured it into this cup and started drinking it. And I was actually surprised. That literally kind of tastes like hose water. I like it. And now it was time to see what it was worth to a pawn shop. Dylan, what are you up to? Well, I just brought something in that you might want to buy. It looks like vodka. This is uh, the finest water you can buy. It's sourced straight from an iceberg. Worth about $300. How do you really know it's from an iceberg? It says it. 
false advertising is illegal. Here. Does it taste different than regular water? Here, I'll let you try it. And then we let him do a blind taste test on the water to see if he could tell which one was iceberg water. I'll take a drink of each one of them. I'll see which one's better, okay? This one tastes a little muskier, like it's old. Is this the expensive one? Yeah. Bam. And then we talked money. This is only half a bottle. I mean, you did drink some of that value. I guess I'll sell this to you for 200. Why 200? Because online it's only $54.99, 69 cents. And he showed me where I could have got it way cheaper. Oh, so, I'd give you 10 bucks. And we still made a deal. So one day after buying a bunch of these sand diamonds, we eventually found one. <gasps> no way. But it turned out to be a black diamond worth so nothing. This is a diamond, but it's the worst diamond there is. So what's it actually worth then? 40 cents. I was distraught, but you guys gave me an idea to buy one of these candles that's guaranteed to have a diamond inside. And it also came with this extra little vial that contained another diamond inside. And it was the smallest diamond ever, so I got out my diamond tester to make sure it was real, and it was. And I was too impatient to let this thing melt all day to find the diamond, so I just started digging for it with this knife. And after a little while of digging through all the wax, we found something. I pulled it out with some pliers like this, and it was another little tube. I opened it up, and we had another diamond inside. So now it was just time to see what they were worth. You know how I've been buying all these things to, like, find gold? and diamonds and stuff. Yep. I got this candle. There's guaranteed a diamond in the candle. There are these little diamonds. Wanna hold it? I just wanna know like how much these are worth. So he pulled it out to measure how big the diamond was and calculated the value. One point. So it's a one point diamond. It's worth about a dollar. So I tried to sell him the diamond plus a candle. Plus your own candle. Oh, that, sweet. That has a diamond inside of it. I think I'd rather just go to my bag and get a diamond. Next time you wanna get diamonds, just bring the cash in here and I'll give you a diamond. So one day, after finding gold in the sand brick and spending $100 to find it, I took it to the pawn shop to see how much it was worth. I have worth. a piece of gold. You see it? That might be the smallest piece of gold I've ever seen. And he weighed it and basically said it was worth about $2, oh, so that's what he gave sir. me. But today, I found the same thing in diamond version, but even here, bigger. Here. They were $10 a pop, and I bought the gold and the diamond. I opened one. it up, and inside was this giant sand diamond that I opened up and started trying to dig through. But it wasn't working, so I got out this hammer and just started beating the diamond in. Until finally, I just had to take it outside and slam it on the ground, and inside was not a diamond, but this rock. So I moved on to try to break open the other diamond I bought. I just hit it with the hammer a bunch of times and ended up just throwing it on the ground as well. No diamond. And after throwing down the other diamond, I was beginning to think we got scammed, finding another rock. But I still have the giant gold brick gold. left with a 1 in 24 chance of finding real gold. Oh, it's gold! <gasps> Dude, this was a 1 in 24 shot. I only bought one of these. And I couldn't believe it. This speck of gold was even a little bit bigger than the last one. So like if I should get to the pawn shop to see what it's worth. So a while back, I bought this candle that had a tiny diamond inside. And then I bought this candle that was supposed to have loads of money inside. But all I ended up finding was this $2 bill. So I ordered two more brand new candles to increase my odds of finding thousands of dollars. This one smells like birthday cake. There's money in these. Anywhere from $2 to $2,500. Last time we only found $2. But I got to figure out how to get it in this pan so we can melt it and find the money faster. And it wouldn't come out, so I had a brilliant idea to put it in this box, tape it up, and throw Kinda it. I'm scared, but... And after a few throws, it sounded pretty shattered. I opened up the box and the candles were pretty broken, but not all the way. So we got off this hammer and finished up the job like this. And remember, I'm a trained professional. I pulled apart the glass like this, then pulled out the wick. Oh, we found the money. I pulled out the money and immediately unwrapped it. And again was what left with this. What is it? It's a $2 bill. We have one left. Ooh. Oh, there's the money. This has to be over $100 or else I'm just losing my money. $2. For $80 worth of candles, I got two $2 bills and an airhead. Worth that. This chocolate bar is going viral because unlike regular chocolate, this one doesn't melt. So I immediately bought some to try and melt it, and it tastes just like regular chocolate, with the main difference being that it's way more crumply. So I'm going to be testing different levels of trying to melt it compared to normal chocolate, starting with a lighter on this Feastables, which completely melted But it. when I put the lighter on this chocolate, it only made it smoke like this. And turned it black. The next test was just letting both bars sit out in the sun, and immediately this Hershey's bar started to melt, while the other bar continued to remain perfectly intact. I then let it sit out in the sun even longer to see if it might melt, but still not nothing happened and it wouldn't melt whatsoever. So I then just put two new bars in the microwave to see what might happen. And as you may have guessed, it melted the Hershey's but did nothing to the other bar. So I went even more extreme and got out the hottest torch you can buy at a hardware store, which made the bar smoke like a piece of wood and also turned the tip black. It's on fire. The chocolate literally catches on fire before it melts. It's just charred, like a piece of wood. We then put a little bit more fire on it to see if anything would happen, but... Not one bit of melting. So yeah, it looks like you really can't melt one of these things. Let me know if I try anything else.
So today I saw this video of this lady freezing ramen noodles outside in the snow in Canada and it's negative three degrees Fahrenheit in Missouri so I figured I'd make some ramen and try it out. I added some seasoning and that ramen was busting. It was really good. Then I had to figure out how I was going to prop up this fork so it would be frozen in midair. So I got out these Lego bricks and this weight and this was my idea. Then I went out in the snow to set it so up. We got our little table and the key is we got to make it thick enough to where the ramen can freeze straight down and hold up the fork. Oh yeah, that's good bro. That right there is gonna freeze overnight. And that's gonna hold up the ramen. That looks like a work of art. I'm gonna come back in the morning and that should be frozen. Sweet dreams, ramen noodles. Let's check on the ramen. It is frozen right there. Yo, that's solid. I'm just gonna pick up the weight. Oh, we did it. That ramen is frozen. It's completely frozen. And it even passed the Dairy Queen shake test. So it does work. It's frozen in the negative degree temperatures. And I took it inside to see if it would thaw out. And then we just did this. Just, oh. <laughs> Today I'm attempting to make the world's strongest glass called a Prince Rupert Drop, which is pretty much indestructible unless you break the tail. I started out just melting this glass with propane, but only got it hot enough to do that. So we stabilized it like this, but only got it hot enough to bend it. So I ordered this completely different type of glass, but was only able to bend it as well. So I bought this new yellow gas that's supposed to burn way hotter, and it actually melted the glass way better. And after a while, the glass was actually dripping and dropped into the water and created what I thought was a Prince Rupert Drop, but it broke. For some reason, the glass completely shattered in the water but we knew how to do it now so we did it again and this time it dropped in the water perfectly and just like that i had created a perfect beautiful prince rupert drop it's perfect and it had a tail that apparently if it gets broken it's supposed wow. to completely shatter so it was time to put it to the test starting with the hammer we whacked it a couple times okay. and it was fine okay. then i hit it again like this really hard and still no damage so we put it in the pliers and it accidentally it. broke the tail off like that but for some odd reason it didn't shatter oh, and it still guys. wouldn't break Oh my gosh. So then we just dropped it from really high. We did absolutely nothing. So my last resort was to just drop this brick on it. And that accidentally completely smashed it. So one day I ordered these $400 giant crock poos to take them to the pawn shop guy to see how much he would give hey, me for them. that's a big box. Yeah, I got something crazy inside of this. It's really hard to get a hold of these because they're really viral right now. You've heard of crocs, right? Have you heard of croc boots? Uh, I've seen them before. There we go. Here's some regular Crocs in there. These are the Croc boots. Those things are hideous. They're really cool, huh? Oh my gosh. Somebody wore them? Uh, I wore them around a little bit just to try them on. They're worth a lot of money and they're really viral right now. Celebrities are wearing them. What do you want to do with them? I just want to see how much you would buy them for. Worth about $500. Here, I'll try them on for you. Man, those are hideous. Oh my gosh. Are they comfortable? Yeah, they're really comfy actually. What size are you? 14. Oh, yeah, let me walk around. I did my best job showing off the croc boots. Look at them, pretty sturdy. Those are pretty cool. How much you say they're worth? Like 500. Let's look them up. So oh, there they are, 359 on StockX right now. I kind of like the looks of the red ones better. The best I would be able to do is 100. How yeah, much you get for them? Uh, a lot of money. Did you say five? Because the receipt where you bought them is in the box. It says you only gave 354 for them. Oh, well, we don't need to see that. It looks like I'm gonna have to walk, I guess. So then I left with my croc see boots. Ya. So after finding the gold in these sand bricks, but not being able to make my money back, what do you think they're worth? $2.44. You guys suggested I try these $25 bags of dirt that contain real gold inside. So I began sifting through all the dirt, trying to look for any sign of gold. And I saw a little speck. Oh, I do see gold. It barely showed up on camera, but I could see it. And then I tried to get it out with these pliers. I carefully picked up the piece of gold to examine it. And it was so tiny and pretty looking. And I couldn't believe it was that easy to find my first piece. I put it in this bag and then kept on looking for more gold. And once I spread it out on the table, we actually found one more piece that was even smaller. So now it was just time to find out what it was worth. I found some more gold. You remember those bricks I bought where it was like the gold in the sand? Yep. Well, this was a bag of dirt and then you could sift for gold and we found these two tiny pieces. I want you to tell me what you think they're worth. Oh wow, those are small. How much was this bag? I paid $25 for the bag of gold. Are you serious? And for that? He then put both pieces on the scale to calculate the value. You got 0.1 gram. 0.1 grams at 100% a spot. You got $5.72 there in gold. And he told me he could pay 80%. About $4. There you go, sir. Only lost $21 on the deal. How much real gold can you find in these toy sand bricks that you can buy at Walmart? Apparently 1 in 24 of these gold bricks that are made for children contain real gold. So I did the most logical thing and bought 24 bricks for $100 to guarantee I would find gold. I wanted to see if it was true and find out how much money the gold was really worth. I started out digging through the sand with the tools it came with, but it wasn't going well, so I got out this hammer and then just snapped it in half and revealed the obsidian rock. But no gold, so I carried on, snapping the bricks in half, finding another rock, but in the third one I found 
found this. Gold. <gasps> it's gold. It's gold. I opened it up and inside was the tiniest little speck of gold I've ever seen in my life. And after finding out all the other bricks contained nothing but rocks, it was time to see what the real gold was worth. So I took it to the pawn shop to find I out. I have a piece of gold. You see it? That might be the smallest piece of gold I've ever seen. I want to see how much it's worth. See if I can make my money back. It's so small, I don't know if I can even And after it. a thorough examination, he told me it was worth about $5 and then offered me. He'll probably give you a few dollars for it. There you go, sir. So one day I wanted to take one of these giant ostrich eggs to the pawn shop guy to see how much he would give me. So I got a brand new one as well as this other item called the tear stick that can make you cry on command and the world's tiniest slinky. And then I went in to see what they were worth. I got some crazy things that you might want to buy. First thing is the world's smallest slinky. See? Look how tiny it is. Well, it is small. Does it work? He then tried to play with it and thought it didn't even work. I think it's defective. So I just got out the next this item. This is used in Hollywood when actors, they need to cry on a scene. It's called a tear stick. So you just rub this under your eyes. It makes you cry. Why don't you cry for me? Okay. See if it really works. It kind of burns your eyes. So I put it on my eyes to demonstrate how it worked. And he even tried it out for himself. It's not burns. I'm actually crying. And it actually made him shed a tear. So I hit I him with my price. I don't cry that much. But I think it's just a menthol stick. I was thinking like 30 bucks on it. I'd give you $3 for it. You know what? I'll take it. We made a deal and I moved on. Uh, my one more thing. What's that? You're gonna want to buy this. Softball? A diaper? Is that an egg? This is an ostrich egg. There's stuff in it. Here's a normal egg, and here's an ostrich egg. Here's the yolk. So one of these can provide you like a hundred grams of protein. Wow. I'll sell it to you for uh, 50 bucks. You can boil it. You can stand on it. How about 20? I think I'd make an omelet for 20 bucks. 25. Just like that, we had a deal. Let Thanks, me know sir. what else to bring in. So after seeing that Gail Lewis's signed Walmart vest was bidding for over $400,000, it gave me an idea. I bought a vest at Walmart and replicated Gail Lewis's signature to see how much the pawn shop guy would give me for it. Well, have you heard of uh, Gail Lewis? No. The... Oh, the Walmart employee? Yeah, yeah. She quit after 10 years? Well, so you'll I know. I bid on a vest that she had on eBay that was going to charity. Oh, really? It got, it got banned off eBay because it was going for like so much money. Yep. Anyway, I got a hold of her and she signed this new vest for me with her signature, Gail Lewis. Nice. And I just want to See how much you would want to buy it for. It seemed like the one she had was actually in a frame. Oh, so this is not the same vest that it was the one that was for selling. Oh no, this is just a different one I had her sign. Oh, okay. So I was thinking since that one was going for four hundred thousand dollars, maybe like a hundred thousand on this one would be fair. You think so? Even though it's actually not a Walmart vest, someone just wrote Walmart on there. But that's still her signature on this vest. Yeah, I don't know. Her signature looks a lot smaller. And then he pulled up the real signature. The G is, is totally messed up. Yeah, I don't think she actually signed. I think it's someone else. Maybe just one is her but Dang. i mean the vest has got to have some kind of value so i mean i'd give you a couple bucks for the vest i know what my vest is worth and i had to walk comment what else to try so after finding and melting all the gold inside these dirt bags into one gold piece, we were left with this tiny speck wow. worth $73.68. And you guys told me to buy even more dirt bags to get even more gold to add on to our 1.16 grams of gold. So I bought the cheapest and the most expensive bag on Amazon to compare the two and see how much more gold we can get. Starting with sifting the $23 bag, we immediately found gold. I put the first tiny speck in this container and then I found another little speck. And throughout the bigger chunks, we kept on finding little specks of gold so we moved on to the finer sand that was sifted out and then found the smallest piece of gold we've seen yet and after a little more searching this was all the gold we found in the $23 bag weighing 0.06 grams and worth about $3.40 and then it was time to sift through the $130 bag of dirt it was a lot darker and there was a lot more dirt so we had to sift through it twice until we were eventually left with all the bigger chunks that I poured out onto the table and spread out and immediately found a big chunk and then found the biggest chunk yet and I even weighed it and it weighed 0.35 grams yeah this more expensive bag was already better and we kept on finding big nugget after big nugget then my brother did one final search through and found this pretty nugget and after that well, there was pretty much no visible gold left so we resorted to sifting like this and found this big chunk and all these other ones and with all the gold found in the expensive bag we brought the total weight to one whole gram worth about 56 dollars so one day I wanted to take this Prince Rupert drop to the pawn shop as well as some other unique items from videos I've made like this chocolate that doesn't melt and this apple juice that actually sounds like an apple. So it was time to see what they were worth. I got some uh, random very unique items that you might want to buy. Uh, maybe. This is chocolate that doesn't burn or melt. That can't be good for you. Is it any good? Oh uh, yeah it's pretty tasty. It's kind of it it's really crumbly. If you take a match to it it's not going to melt. That's what makes it unique. I don't know if that's cool in your body or not. I think it's like just a novelty item you know. Like a dollar for it? I was thinking like 20. Well, how much is it on like Amazon? It's out of this country too. Very exotic. Well, the and he found it on Amazon for a dollar a bar. A dollar a piece. That's right where I offered you. So we made a there deal. Go, Speaking of exotic chocolate, here we have a raw cacao pod. That's kind of cool. Can we open it up? If you buy it. 
How much you want for it? Hundred dollars. That's sourced from the jungle. You can't get that around these parts. Would you buy something like this and resell it? No, I'd probably just cut it open and see what's inside of it, like for five bucks. Oh, I'll just keep it. This next thing might be the last remaining apple juice that this company made that when you bite into it, it sounds like a real apple. That sound real. They quit making it? They just don't use the same plastic that sounds like an apple anymore. That's wow. why I think that one's probably worth a fortune. I mean, it's expired, but... He looked it up and then offered me... I'd give you five bucks just because I think it's kind of cool. No, I think this is really valuable. I ought to keep it. The last thing I have is a Prince Rupert drop. So this glass drop is unbreakable. I probably couldn't break this. You don't think I could? You gotta try? Yeah, you can try. Let's go put it in the vice. He took it back to this vice and put it oh. in, and it eventually popped out like oh, this, yeah. but did not break. Didn't break. Well, I mean, it's kind of cool. I probably wouldn't have any interest in it. Oh, okay. So. I'll just keep it. So after attempting to melt my gold into a nugget, but just getting it stuck in this crucible, I just ended up taking all the gold I had from sifting through dirt to this jeweler who melted it all down for me into a nice little bead. It literally weighs three grams now and is worth about $185. And today I'm going back in to buy some scrap silver to attempt to melt into my own bar. You know how I've been melting down lots of metals and stuff? Yep. I was wondering if you had any uh, scrap silver or something that I like, could buy from you. Things like stuff like this? Yeah, that'll work. And it was worth $50. 52 bucks right there. So now I'm gonna attempt to melt melt it all into a bar with this torch that's actually meant for melting stuff. But first I just put a little bit of the silver in to test it out. And I got the flame going on it, then threw some of this borax so it didn't stick and tried to get it hotter and hotter and eventually it started melting for real. And it all melted into this neat little ball and I thought it was ready but it was just stuck. So we had to heat it up again to try to get it unstuck. And just like that it was red hot and I dumped it out and had myself a little silver coin. And I was able to fit about half the silver I had into this little crucible and began melting down all these little chains. It took a more time for all the chains to heat up because it was a lot more silver but eventually it got red hot and started crumpling into its own little ball that I dumped out onto the thing and then put in water to cool it off and it looked perfect. Perfect. My own silver coin. Comment if you want me to try to melt the rest of this silver. So after finding a lot of gold in these dirt bags, I wanted to try to smelt it all into one gold bar. But as you may know, I sold most of my gold yes. to the pawn shop guy. It's worth $57. So my first step was buying it back. Hey, remember that gold I sold you? The little bits of nuggets? Yeah, the little stuff you found in the bag. Yeah, I was actually wanting to buy that back. Do you still have it? Is this it? Uh, what are you going to do with it? I'm going to melt it into a bar. Are you going to sell it with a bar when you get done? Maybe, yeah. So then he just let me buy it back for what he paid. Sweet. Thank you, sir. Then I left and went to a local jeweler who was going to help me melt it down. Oh, oh how you? I gave him my little bits of gold and he said he could melt it all down in this little crucible. He threw this borax on it so it wouldn't stick and then got out his torch and started pouring the heat on it. And I watched in awe as he kept throwing the borax on there and pretty soon the gold was looking like a little pearl. Then he gave me the torch and let me move it around with this tool that made it move like a squishy little ball. And it was so small we didn't really even need to pour it in the mold but we did anyway and it looked like wow. this. A perfect little wow. gold ball. That's amazing. It's like a little button. Then I took it to the pawn shop. It looks a lot better than it did. Well it's not very big though. Did he test it to see what carrot it was? He said it's about 18 to 20 probably. 18 to 20, that's about what I'd guess. 1.2 gram. You want to test it to see what carrot it is? Yeah, let's test it. And he used all these different acids yeah. to test what carrot it was. 20 carrots probably. How much is it worth? $73.68. That's a lot of money. How much you got invested in that? Oh, uh, like 200. Wow, that's a heck of a return on investment right there. Wait, so how much would you pay for this? I'd probably give you $70 for it. You know what? I'm going to keep it for now. It might go up in value. If you want to buy some gold, just come look me up and I'll sell you some gold. You don't have to buy bags of dirt to get gold. Oh, okay. So one day I went to the store to buy every single energy drink brand and flavor to mix into one single energy drink concoction. Starting with these end caps of different flavors and then we stumbled upon the mother load of all the energy drinks. I didn't even realize the dollar store had this many energy drinks but I just started grabbing them all and I was seeing so many brands and flavors I'd never even heard of. And our cart went from looking like this to looking like this. And I walked out spending $128 on energy drinks and then I went to Walmart to get the drinks I missed like Ghost, Bang, Prime, and Celsius. And we had everything on a single table and it was time to sort them all completely by brand which took quite a while and the award for the most drinks went to monster monster energy had way more drinks than everyone and else. now the plan was to add a half tablespoon of each drink into this blender and into this jug and i also tried some drinks which were good mm, i like that one and then some that were not so good Ew, what is that? And here we are just speeding everything up, mixing every single energy drink, and this is what it looked like after we mixed every single monster energy. Yeah, kind of gross. And we carried on dumping all the other drinks, Prime and everything, just completely filling up this little <laughs> drill. Eventually we had done it. We had made the most insane energy drink that has ever been made in the history of history. And it kind of looked like coffee, but I smelled it and poured it in a cup to try. And some of the liquids immediately separated in the cup Let's like this. It. And it was kind of bland. Is it? It's all right. Ha <laughs> ha!
So one day I wanted to find out how many rubber bands it takes to get inside this safe and explode this Hawaiian punch and Diet Coke I shook up. Starting with the safe, we got busy just wrapping all the bands around the center, trying to create as much pressure as possible, but we realized these rubber bands were too small, so we got out these red rubber bands and just began wrapping them around the other rubber bands and trying to keep them all in the center so we could create the most pressure possible to explode the safe. And my goal was to at least damage the safe enough to get inside. We went through a bag of rubber bands and then started placing another one until we completely finished that pile as well. And at this point we had literally been placing bands on this thing for literally an hour so i thought i would try to speed the process along by dropping i went up on this ladder thing and just threw it down and i think it did increase the pressure of the bands because it created this gap so i threw it again and it made the gap even bigger and we could even see inside the front of the safe so we dropped it a few more times but didn't end up getting into it so we just moved on to the orange fruit punch where i was hoping to create enough pressure to just explode the bottle up the top and after a while i just gave it a slight twist and it did this I then shook up the Diet Coke to try to create as much pressure as possible with the rubber band combined and tried to do a little bottle rocket thing, but it didn't explode on the first try, so I threw it up again, and it exploded sideways like this. So one day, I bought the world's biggest candy to hand out on Halloween night, and things got really crazy really fast. It started out normal and calm, giving out all the regular full-size candy bars. I got these nuts! Can I have the nuts? And everyone was loving it. And then I started handing out the giant candy. And then things started to pick up as more and more kids started to show up. Here's a Word spread and they even started asking for the giant candy. So I gave it to them and even let them walk in and take it. Until I was down to my last one. I have one left. And they went crazy fighting over the last gummy. I'm going to throw it up in the air, okay? Back up, back up. Ready? Oh gosh, don't get hurt. Nobody caught it, nobody caught it. Nobody I caught it. it, I caught it. Jayden! Oh, he's stolen. And to console the chaos, I just handed out a bunch of Feastables. This is the rubber band ball. Yeah, it's part 106 of my over 2,000 pound rubber band ball and I haven't worked on it in over four months. But you guys commented wanting an update on the ball, so we went live and added a ton of rubber bands to the ball. We just take the giant pile of bands and loop them all together like this until the whole pile is completely done and ready to put on the ball. And a lot of you guys also commented about how the ball is not round anymore and it looks like an oval. And this is because the ball is over 2,000 pounds and we can't move it to make it more round and it has to stay in one spot to place bands on it. But we're going to be doing our best to make it round we put it on the ball like this and then started wrapping it around and around until all that hard work was completely on the ball and basically made it look no different but it still looks insane the rubber band ball is complete it officially weighs more weight like if we should keep going or comment down below if we should destroy the rubber band ball. so one day i had an idea to take this small metal detector into walmart and scan all these gold bricks until i found one with gold so completely unsure if it could even detect the gold i just started waving it around every brick until we heard a slight buzz so I threw that brick in my car and we headed to Target to buy the bigger bricks that cost $10. I took this cart of bricks to this random aisle and just started skinning them all. And in pretty much all of them, we basically heard nothing. And then we saw an employee and kind of hit. And eventually we got a few bricks where we heard a slight beep. So we just grabbed all of those ones and took them back to test. And you guys also commented saying I need to dissolve them in water so it'll go by faster. So we put the first one in water and started hitting into it and then broke and it. And to our shock, we got gold first try. We actually got gold on the first one. I then put it up against the tester to see if it worked and it did. Yo, that is the tiniest piece of gold. And in the next break, we weren't so lucky. We just found this rock. And literally in the very next break, we did it again. We found more gold. And now we were really defying the odds with a less than 1% chance of this happening. And we still have these $10 bricks that we broke into and ended up being nothing but rocks in literally both. And of now them. I just wanted to see how much my newfound fortune was worth. I wanted to see what you think these things are worth. Each piece was about the size of a ballpoint pen, and he weighed them to calculate the value. So what do you think they're worth? $2.44. And how much you pay for those little bricks? Uh, the bricks are like $4 a piece. Yeah, I wouldn't buy any more. Even if you find a piece of gold, it's not worth the $4 you're finding. Dang. So after completely filling my parents' storm cellar up with popcorn, spending days popping popcorn and filling it up to the top, I had a new idea for the storm cellar. I wanted to turn it into the ultimate gaming setup. This way I could play as much Lego Fortnite as I wanted. First step was cleaning up the cellar because it was kind of dirty. Here's all the dirt I got out of it. And once it was clean, it was time to add the giant Legos. Here's all the giant Legos I bought to put inside the storm cellar. And I just began stacking them on the walls. My goal was to just cover each wall and add some color to the storm cellar to really make it pop. And after quite some time, I was onto my last crate and we had completely filled up the storm cellar with Legos and this is what it looked like.
Now for the gaming setup. I ran an extension cord all the way down to the storm cellar, got a little TV out, then my brother graciously loaned us his PS5. We put that all in the storm cellar, hooked it up, and it was time to run Fortnite. I then loaded up a new Lego Fortnite world and it worked perfectly. Now I can just get on my phone's hotspot, go inside the cellar, and run Fortnite. Completely immersed in the storm cellar. So one day I wanted to flex seal this giant ostrich egg to see if it would keep it from breaking. These eggs are already extremely durable and can survive almost anything besides a car. So I got out this yellow flex seal and started coating the entire egg in the flex seal with the first layer. And then I left and came back when it was dry to add another coat. It was completely dry so we flipped it over and added the second coat on top completely covering the and egg. And it looked really neat so I left one more time and came back again, added another coat, and then it was time to let it sit for 24 hours and then test and it. And the next day the egg was dry dry and it looked super cool and felt super durable and rubbery. We're gonna toss this up in the air. Comment down below if you think the flex seal will make it survive or if the egg will crack. Three, two, one. Go! And here's the slow-mo. It just completely shattered the egg and was barely intact. Today I wanted to see how much money I could actually make trying to sell stuff at the pawn shop. Including this rare coin collection that I actually bought from the pawn shop guy six months ago to see if it would appreciate it in value. And some other household items including spray chalk, life straw, this camera, and this old iPhone that I wanted to sell. Hey, what's up? You might recognize this thing. I do recognize that. Yeah, you sold this to me. I think these have appreciated in value. You think so? I just want to see how much, you know, I could get out of these. And he told me the same price I bought them for. 200 bucks. Hmm. I'll think about it. Let me okay. show you some other stuff. Next up, we have this Aang Energy lifting belt. You work out? Does it look like I work out? A good hat. Oh, I don't know. It's probably worth 10 bucks. Let's do it. What? No, and just like that, we were up to $10. I got this Polaroid camera. Oh, wow. Is that from 1967? No, it's new. Is that the one that's about a buck a shot to take a picture? It doesn't come with film. Oh, so. that's what costs all the money. Yeah, I'd probably pitch it for you if you want. I don't know that I'd want to buy it. So I moved on. Spray chalk. Spray chalk. It's like fake spray paint. You can prank somebody, a spray paint their car, and you want them to like get all freaked out and prank them. You want how much? They're $8.19 at Walmart. How about five bucks? And that brought our total to $15. Then I showed him the life straw. Oh, one of those. Oh, you got one? Yeah, you want to buy it? It's hard to buy a used straw. Next up, got an iPhone 13 Pro Max. That's pretty nice. What do you want for it? 500. I'd probably do three, 350. I mean, I could probably sell it for you. If you want to leave it here, I'll sell on commission and just like charge you 10 or 15% or whatever I sell it for. So I left him the phone to sell and left with $15. I'm rich! 